Hi children, welcome to Equid Learning. So this is the grade six, chapter four in the workbook. And uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos, uh, there's a separate uh, playlist for the textbook activities of the grade six. And this is uh, another separate um, playlist where I will be talking only about grade six workbook chapters, right? So yeah, so we'll start again then. Uh, this is about chapter four, using mouse and keyboard to use application software. So uh, please go to the relevant uh, textbook chapter and complete uh, all the activities. And then please look this uh, video because uh, it is really good. Then you can check whether your answers are correct or wrong. Uh, please don't copy uh, the same answers from this um, video and just write because that will not uh, give you anything, right? So uh, first, Try yourself and then you can check the answers and the explanation. Okay, so we'll start with activity 4.1. It's asking to describe application software. So uh, here, application software means uh, various programs which execute user requirements. So you know software, when it comes to software, there are two types, system software and application software. So uh, system software means like operating system. And application software means uh, like uh, various programs which help to uh, execute user requirements. And it's not must to have uh, these application software because uh, th that is based on the user requirements. So you can install uh, any number of application software uh, based on your requirement, right? Next one. Find out types of software that is appropriate for each of the tasks given. So they have given some uh, examples uh, for application software like word processing software, search engine, web browser, spreadsheet software, and the graphic software. So they are asking you to uh, fill based on the task, right? So to prepare documents, we can use word processing software like Microsoft Word, right? Finding information on the internet. Uh, so that should be done with a search engine. Right. Remember, web browser is not for uh, that. Web browser uh, is to access the internet. Right. Search engine is to find information on the internet. Uh, drawing picture. So that for that we can use graphic software. And to prepare budget reports, we have to use uh, spreadsheet software. So uh, like Microsoft Excel. Right. And preparation of invitation cards. Uh, we can do this with graphic software. Like now we got two answers for that. And uh, graphic software, like for example, uh, you can think about um, Microsoft Paint. That's a basic level of uh, graphic software, but you have uh, some things like um, Photoshop and TAS uh, software. Uh, so these things can be used uh, for graphic uh, editing, right? Next one. Prepare a list of 10 tasks you can perform using the computer. So they are asking in addition to the question two, right? So you can think of so many things you can do with your computer with the internet connection. But if you don't have an internet connection, some of these things cannot be done. But if you have a computer with, the, with an internet connection, you can do so many things, right? So uh, you can play computer games, you can send emails, you can watch videos, movies, uh, you can listen to songs, right? You can prepare lessons, notes, assignments, reports, right? And online learning, that's what you are doing now. You are watching some YouTube uh, video and you are learning, right? And next one, social networking. Social networking can be done uh, with uh, different applications like Facebook, uh, Twitter, even this TikTok, all these things, right? and finding route using maps. Now, earlier days, we didn't have Google Maps, right? And now think uh, in earlier days when we want to find some place, we have to ask from people. People will tell different routes, right? And some people will turn right, turn left. So it's so ambiguous, right? Sometimes we go on wrong path, right? But with the maps, nowadays, it's very easy to go any place, anywhere. Now, if you want to go to some place in Jaffna, just search it and just go. Right, so it's very easy now. Uh, video conferencing, especially in our offices, because we work with uh, clients and the team members in different countries, uh, we can get together with video conferencing. So it's very easy. We don't have to travel for that particular country. We can just uh, uh, schedule a meeting and we can talk and we can uh, get our things clarified. 
Next one, e-book reading, right? So nowadays, so many people don't buy the books, right? They just read e-books, right? And prepare presentations. Uh, so uh, sometimes if you have watched my videos in some places I'm sharing some presentations. So uh, that is, uh, can be used to explain something more in details. Uh, even for teaching, we can use presentations. Next one, list five instances where special purpose software is used. Now in your book, there's a, uh, if you remember, there's a chart. So it, in that chart, it uh, describes there are two uh, types of application software. Some are like uh, uh, general purpose, some are special purpose or the customized ones. So here it's about customizing the special purpose application software, like library management systems, computer games, banking management systems, hospital management systems, uh, like that. It will be uh, based on that particular uh, place or the, now if it's a banking management system, HNB Bank will have a different kind of software. Uh, Bank of Ceylon will have another type of uh, software. Sometimes that can be commonly used between banks, but um, Usually, their requirements are different, so they will have different types of uh, softwares for that. Next one, activity 4.2. So here it is uh, showing the following screenshots uh, show how the mouse appears on a computer screen on different occasions. So now, see my uh, mouse pointer is like a hand. So like that, uh, in different cases, we will have a different kind of mouse pointer. So they are asking, what is this one? So this is the standard point, right? Where you can do any task. Uh, it's ready to select something or like that. You can do any task. Uh, it's ready to do some task. This is standard way of uh, the mouse pointer. This one, it's a link point, especially when you have a, a hyperlink, like with the underlying thing where you can click it and go somewhere. So in those cases, if you go near for those links, you can see this link pointer where it will show up when there's a link, hyperlink, right? Next one, sometimes when your computer performance is very low, you may have seen this a lot of, right? Uh, because this is the hourglass uh, where it will show as the busy pointer. That means the computer is running multiple tasks and it needs to catch up. Right, so when you see this one, please let it um, do uh, its background operations and wait for some time. Don't press again, clicking and all these things again and again, because then it will uh, consume the memory and the RAM also. So uh, please wait if you get this kind of a mouse point. So they're asking you to name uh, this picture, right? So A is the left button, B is the scroll wheel, where you can scroll like this, see? I'm scrolling with the scroll wheel. Uh, so C is for the right button. So from the left button, you can see uh, the uh, normal click. You can drag things, you can select things. And with the right button, you can do the right click. OK, in actually 4.3. So here they have uh, given some keyboard and types of keys have been like categorized. And they're asking you to write three examples for each type. For example, if you think about A, uh, you can write any of these letter characters. I have written one letter A character. So you can write any letter characters, number characters are belonging to that tab, caps lock, shift, space bar, uh, enter key, backspace, right? Or any of these yellow color key you can mention. It's a very easy task. Second one is about B. And B is basically for the escape character and the, all the function keys. So you can write F1, F2, like that, any, any function keys. C is for these green color things. So you can have uh, this part. So it will have insert, home, page up, page down, end, delete, so all these keys. Next one, D, it's for the number uh, palette, right? So it has num lock. You do know what is happening from num lock. If you click this uh, some one time, uh, some you can type the numbers. If you click that num lock again, it will lock the key. So that number pad will not work. Okay, so you, sometimes if you touch this number pad and if it's not typing, please click or please type the name. Please type num lock so uh, you can again type the number. So in this one, you have 
division, uh, subtraction, addition, multiplication, enter key, delete key, all these things, right? So D is having them. Then comes the E, it's about the arrow keys, right? So you can write up arrow, left arrow, right arrow, down arrow, right? Next one. In here, they're asking, write down the tasks performed by the following keys, right? So here we have the delete key, right? So this, now you were learned about the backspace. The backspace, what happened? It deletes a character to the left of the uh, cursor. Now in this one, the delete character will um, delete the uh, character right of the cursor, right? One at a time. Next one, shift. Shift one, you already learned. The shift is uh, helping us to do two things. One thing is if you want to change your case of the letters, for example, now default keyboard is typing simple letters. So if you want to type a capital letters while you're typing uh, simple letters, you can press shift and the letter key, and then you can type capital letters, right? Um, and uh, some keys you may have seen uh, in the key, you have uh, two symbols on top and down, right? So if you want to top, uh, type the top one, uh, you can press the shift key and that a particular key. So the, um, the symbol at the top will be uh, typed. Next one tab was you have learned in your textbook to insert larger space. So there is a space bar and a tab, two things. So in the tab, uh, you can insert larger space in uh, space bar. You can insert smaller space. Next, you have the Windows key, right? So Windows key sometimes uh, you, you have you press and see. If you press it, you can get the start menu, right? And uh, sometimes for different tasks, uh, like with the Windows key, and if you press some another key, you can do some Windows functions. For example. If you press uh, Windows key and the letter L together, it will lock your computer. So again, you have to uh, unlock and into your passwords and credentials, and then again, go inside of your computer. So Control L will lock, the, um, your, lock your computer, not like permanently, like for a temporary, when you go out, you have to lock the computer and go, right? Uh, if you, especially if it's a, in a public place and it's your computer, lock it and go because otherwise anybody can access your computer. Then comes the end key. Usually end key is helpful in our uh, text editing uh, applications like Microsoft Word, like word processing software, it's helpful because this can be used to move your cursor to the end of the line, okay? Next time. Activity 4.4. Mention three difficulties and complexities which can rise when the mouse is not properly used. So in this one, it's a bit ambiguous question. So I thought about the health hazards which can be used because if you don't use it properly with your proper gesture and all, you can get so many health hazards, right? So I have mentioned those things. The question is not very clear. They have not clearly asked the health hazards. They have just asked uh, difficulties and complexities which can rise when the mouse is not properly used, right? So it can be like some vagueness is there, like uh, for example, your mouse is not working and it's freezing, some kind of those answers also can be written because they have not properly asked the health hazard. But I uh, prefer this one because they tell uh, difficulties and complexity which can arise when the mouse is not properly used. So if you don't use it properly, uh, with the correct gesture, then you can get these kind of health hazards like pain around the wrist, numbness in the fingers, like especially for the hand and the fingers, elbow part, that is the places we get problems. And next one is pain along the forearm and elbow. Next one, sorry, again, uh, mention three difficulties and complexity which can arise when the keyboard is not properly used. So keyboard is also for the fingers and the hand and elbow. So you can get problems in those areas. So carpal uh, tunnel, so that's the same thing for the wrist. Uh, you may type and see in the Google. Uh, so this is basically your wrist part is very uh, paining and all, right? 
and then comes the strain from uh, fingers to shoulders like the numbness fingers shoulders up that place you can get problems and pain in the fingers because if you don't type it properly uh, with both your hands and with the uh, proper keys for your uh, particular fingers then you will face different problems right uh, five examples for graphic software so in your book you have the, these two i guess uh, smart draw and microsoft paint right but you can think of adobe photoshop adobe illustrator and uh, tux paint software now in the end of this uh, workbook um, chapter they ask you to use microsoft paint and tux so i am only explaining with microsoft paint but you can use this tux paint and uh, try it write five examples for word processing software so microsoft word is very popular and it's a proprietary one you have to pay for the license but if you think about this open uh, office uh, libra office so these are uh, not all uh, proprietary it's open source you can just download and use it right so abby word a uh, word perfect these are examples for word processing software so if you have some time just go for a comparison and see what these are why people are using uh, different things like so microsoft word is the most popular one i guess uh, so like that you can think what are the features available for these things and all right yeah in this one actually 4.5 so i will explain uh, this with microsoft paint so uh, please open up your book because i will not show this uh, instructions i will follow the instructions in my other screen and i will just do it in uh, microsoft paint for you Delete read the question for one time, like uh, get the teacher's assistance if the steps for the following activity may differ according to your version of operating system installed in your computer. Uh, so here they are going to uh, draw a picture uh, of a blue sky with the sun rising, right? Okay, so this is what we are going to draw, right? So uh, please wait, I will do it slowly step by step. So you can open uh, up uh, Microsoft Paint, right? What basically you have to do is you can uh, type in the search bar in your. So here you can uh, search here like uh, Paint. So it will suggest you, and you can open it up, right? Uh, Microsoft Paint. Right. So if it's uh, not installed in your computer, then uh, you have to. I install this um, the Microsoft Office package and get this. So in your school lab, definitely this may be installed. So you can try it there. So we are going to start with a new blank drawing area, right? So step one, they are asking to go for the shapes. Here you have different shapes and you have to select the circle shape, right? You select it, right? The circle shape. I write, if you select it, you can see it like this, right? Can you see the others are not having the shaded thing? So we have selected the circle. So you select it, you use the left mouse button, right? Click it and drag it. So if you drag it like this, it will become oval. So if you drag it like a circle shape, a perfect one, you can make it small if you want. So it will be like this. Okay, so you draw the circle like this. Okay, so you can do it uh, if you want to shift this. Yeah, so you have drawn like here. So if you can draw, do it in the middle area, so it's up to you, right? Then you have to select the uh, pencil tool. Here you have a pencil tool. See, when I select it, it has a shadow. So you have a, to select this pencil uh, tool, click the uh, left mouse button, and then you can draw, right? So I uh, hope you have remembered the picture. They have some lines uh, around, small lines around the circle. This is a sun we are going to draw, right? So you can click the mouse button and drag uh, for different areas, and you can uh, draw it, right, like this. So if you want, you can have some curves, 
it's more looking more natural but otherwise you can use these lines also now if i show you this line is like uh, more straight so if you want that you can use that particular one or i'm using the pencil one as in the textbook so if you want to erase there's an eraser here so if you want to make it a big one big eraser click on the control and plus so then it will become big right control key and the plus key both together if you want to make it small control plus the subtraction sign so then you, the eraser is going to become big then it's easy so i'm clearing up this uh, if you want you can use those lines but in your textbook as they were told to use the pencils uh, i'm using that tool and draw right so i'm uh, clicking on the left mouse button right and i am drawing i just click on left mouse button and drag that's it so please give a try right don't skip these parts these are practical things and which will be useful for you in future not for the exam maybe because in the exam you don't have a practical session but it's uh, really helpful so they have used small lines in between the big ones so I also follow similar thing. So using the mouse, it may be a bit hard to draw, right? But you can give a try. Okay, we have drawn uh, the sun. I have uh, drawn it in the middle way. So I have drawn the perfect sun, but in your textbook, it's about half way. So no worries, right? Only they have drawn the top part for the race and then they're asking uh, to uh, take another uh, two circles for the eyes and cheeks right okay we'll get the circle again right we'll have small two circles for the eyes right and the eye uh, cheeks right and inside the eye there's another small circle can you see? There's a small one here. This one is not drawn perfectly. So I am making my erase small control, control key and the minus key. So I'm going to erase this one and draw it again. Like this. Uh, and I have to draw the mouth. So for mouth, I'm using a bit um, like a kind of a brush with black color. Like this, I want to show you another tool. And then uh, the eyes, you can see the only the eyeballs are uh, white, others are black. So you can color it with this paint bucket, the fill with color tool, right? You can use it and you can use the black color from the color palette. Anyway, it's having black, so I'm coloring only the eyes. Okay, so mouth, they have used the pencil tool, but I have used the brush to show you some more, right? And then we are going to color this thing. You can use this uh, paint basket thing and the color palette, right? So we'll take the red color for the sun. Right, and we'll just click here, just click it here according because in this space. But remember, if you have some kind of a uh, space now in this one, you won't get because you would use the circle tool. But in now, for example, if I show you something, if I draw a rectangle, uh, not like this, I will use the pencil. So, for example, I will show you if I draw something like this, and if I don't finish it. And if I put the colors, what will happen? It will spill, right? So this area, you have to close it properly. Otherwise, it will spill, right? For example, now if I put, it's uh, in a particular area only, right? So if you draw these pictures, make sure you don't have any spaces because then the color will spill out, okay? So we have drawn the sun, right? And then we are going to uh, 
color the background. So it's very easy. We can use some kind of a blue. This one also perfect. And we'll just click outside. So it will have the blue sky. Right. Then we are going to save this picture. So you can follow the steps. You can go for file and then you can save and then you can uh, select any location. Uh, like now, for example, I will select the desktop itself and then I will save with the name. So I selected the location and then I will give a name. like demo and then i will save it okay hope it's very clear you so you can try out different different pictures it's very interesting thing right so after the exams you are free for december please try these things right yourself and be an expert on microsoft paint so you can slowly touch these uh, softwares and get the practice because just studying the textbook and writing for the exams won't help you in IT industry. In IT industry, you have to practically do these things. Okay, so you can try this out uh, using Microsoft Paint. So uh, same thing, they are asking you to use the Tux Paint software and do. So I am not uh, showing that part. You can try it if you want, but it's the same thing, right? similar things. See the screen also, it's like this. You can select different tools, color palette is there, brushes are there, so you can do similar way. Next one, so this, this activity 4.6, uh, it's about the Microsoft Word application, right? How to uh, use Microsoft uh, Word application, right? So similarly, what I told you, you can click the start button uh, like, uh, Windows key and you get the start menu and then uh, you can select all programs and go to the Microsoft Office and select Microsoft Word or you can just type like what I show in the Microsoft Paint. You can type on the search bar and type Word. So if you have uh, Microsoft packages installed, you will get Microsoft Word as a suggestion. So you can use it. Right? Then you can see this particular Word screen. Okay, so I got a new um, Word document, right? I'm going to type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you press the number keys, 1, then press the space key. If you want a more, the, more space, you can type tap, see? If you want to have like this, we can use the tab. So I'm pressing tab, number 4, tab, number 5, tab, number 6, tab, number seven, tab number eight, tab number nine and tab. And then for 10, you have to press one and zero together. Then if I want to go for the new line, I have to press enter key, right? So I press the enter key and then I'm typing computer. So if you want, you can just type 
computer like this. This is just a simple letter. So I just type with my default keyboard. Or if I want, I can press the caps lock key and then I'm typing computer like this. It will have all the capital letters. Or I will go, sorry. I will go for the default keyboard again by typing caps lock. Now it's simple letter mode, okay? In this way, I will type the first letter only capital. So I will press the shift and the C together. So I get the capital letter and then other ones with the default keyboard. So you can try these things, right? Then again, saving similar way file, save, and you select some location and then you save. Here yeah, you click uh, file save and you um, type uh, some, uh, you search for some location to save it and then you uh, give a file name, suitable name like this and you save it. So similarly, like uh, Microsoft Word, you can use LibreOffice also. It's also some open office software, open source software. So uh, same thing, right? Same thing. So I uh, probably hope most of your school lab uh, computers will have Microsoft Word installed. So then it's easy. Otherwise you can just download this uh, LibreOffice thing. And you can try the same thing. It's very like the Microsoft Word I have explained. So that is, uh, this is the LibreOffice um, UI, very similar. Activity 4.7, uh, explain what is meant by audio tape, right? So audio tape is a magnetic tape which we used uh, to record sound. Right. So uh, for if you have only sound, we call it as audio. So uh, for audio editing software, we can have uh, Audacity, Adobe Audition. These two have been mentioned in your textbook. Please uh, remember those things and especially the symbols and uh, the logo. So, uh, in addition, WavePad, Logic Pro X, FL Studio. So these things can be written. Uh, but if you want, you can search in Google and find more answers and write, don't just copy, okay? Audio editing software. And about video editing, uh, video tape, it's a magnetic tape which we use to store audio and video both together. Like in a movie, we have audio and video both. So for that one, also you can use video editing software. Like for example, I'm using OpenShot for my video editing. I'm not doing much editing here, just adding the sound and all. So uh, you can use like that. And uh, in your textbook, we have Adobe Premiere Pro as well. So in addition to that, I move Nero Video, Coral uh, Video Studio. These things can be written as your answers. Next one. Yeah, in activity 4.8, here they're asking five ethics that should be followed when recording and editing video editor tapes, right? Uh, so here, uh, when you're recording, even when you are taking a photo of others, you have to take the permission of others, right? Especially if it's kids, then you have to get the permission of the, from the parents. You cannot just uh, record or just uh, take photos of others. And uh, when you're recording um, and when you're editing uh, images and uh, recordings, uh, you should not make other people uncomfortable, right? Uh, for example, if you get some uh, like private uh, videos of others and those things don't uh, make uh, edit like that edit them then they make it uh, uncomfortable and uh, don't uh, make in order to give a false idea now some people record uh, some uh, video clips like for one hour two hour and then they take only one minute uh, small portion from it small part from it and then uh, try to publish them so it's it will give a total wrong total false idea because people don't listen to the full story. They take only that part and they uh, think oh, this is what this person has said. Don't do like that and don't edit for fraudulent purposes. And uh, when you're editing, uh, make sure the identity of you and the relevant parties are there and especially uh, when it comes to copyrights. 
uh, you have to uh, follow the guidelines okay yeah next one they are asking you to uh, record something right so uh, they are asking uh, to sing this song twinkle twinkle little star and uh, you have to record it so for that one they are asking a suitable software to record this one so i am showing this using audacity so you can download it i will put the link uh, down in the description box so you can um, type uh, that one and get it right for example it's not very hard to find i will show you in the google you just type uh, audacity download see it's suggesting and coming so you can go to the here uh, go to this particular first link i will uh, show you this one i will put it here and you can uh, download for windows for mac os and or if, if it's linux so you can just download it and install right So, um, and they are asking you to write the steps clearly from the beginning. So it's very easy, right? Uh, I will show you, then you can write the steps very easily. So I'm using Audacity. So I have already installed it. And uh, like the earlier one in the search bar, I can type Audacity and get the particular uh, software here, right? So I'm going to, here you can start this is the playing thing so you can uh, record also so i'm going to record the song so this is my audacity so from this one i can record right now i'm going to record the song i click this and sing my song twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky then after i am recording i stop it right and if i want to listen this again i can play it and listen like this now i, I hope you don't listen it uh, so you can play it and listen okay and you can do any editing and those things I'm not telling because it's not relevant for your um, syllabus. So a similar way, file and uh, you have to save, but if you save it, it will save at the Audacity file. But if you want to export it into different terms like MP3, so then you can um, save it in a different place like uh, demo. And uh, you will get a, a screen like this. You can type the title, for example, demo. You can give the artist name like that. So this is related to music stuff and all. So you can click OK and you can save it. So then uh, you can have like this, the demo file. Like this, uh, where uh, you can listen to this song. Now, uh, as we are having sharing different screen and all, you don't listen to the sound, but you can play this and you can listen. Okay, so basically what are the steps? You click the record button and you sing the song and you stop it. And if you want, you can export it to different versions and then you can give the relevant metadata, the file name, the artist name, and all these things, and just save it. Right? Nothing big. So here they're asking you to do a drama and record. This is about audio stuff. Sorry, this is about video stuff. Uh, so you can uh, edit them and see. Like, for example, you can use open shot like thing for editing. So these things, try it down. You can do. Uh, because um, otherwise you don't get the practical knowledge of this. So hope you learn a lot from this one. This is chapter four. Uh, so uh, if you have uh, still subscribed my channel, please do subscribe and please add a comment. So those uh, lot of kids are adding comments. Thanks for that. Uh, it's so encouraging to do more for this channel. And uh, if you still uh, didn't press the bell notification, press it and keep, then you will get the notifications when I upload uh new videos so um, 
if you have a uh, friends relatives please share this channel this channel because especially in this pandemic it will be really helpful for them to learn right thank you very much